Hi, everyone. Give everyone just a minute to get signed on here. Hello, hello, everybody. Okay. All right. Well, hi, everyone. Welcome to Hawk Mountain Sanctuary Storytime. My name is Riley. Today, we are going to be reading the story, The Mitten, and uh, doing some fun activities. So I'm so happy you're here. If you're happy, can you dance like your favorite animal? At Hawk Mountain, we love nature. We love the birds. We love the raptors. We love all wildlife. We love the plants and animals, the earth and the sky, because all living things are connected. Do you love nature too? So today we have an amazing story and activity for you all today. First, we're going to read the story, The Mitten by Jan Brett. I actually used to love this story when I was little. So it's an amazing story. Then we're going to learn a little bit more about the animals that we are going to read about in our story today and what they do in the winter time. Lastly, we're going to finish the program with a really fun craft that you can create at home with just a few simple materials. This is just a friendly reminder that this program is being recorded. So if you ever want to watch this program again, it's going to be on our YouTube channel, um, probably in about a day or so. So you can watch it as many times as you want. And also, if at any time during this program, you have a question for me, about the story or whatever we're learning about, you can ask below. If you look on your screen at the Q&A button, you can ask questions in there. I see some people in the chat. Hi, everybody. Um, so yeah, looking forward to getting started here. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. We're gonna read the story, The Mitten, together. And it's actually a Ukrainian folk tale. And before I... Um, read you the story, I wanted to show you where is Ukraine on a map. So here I have a globe and right now here at Hawk Mountain, we're in Pennsylvania, which is right here. We're part of the United States, which is a part of North America. And if you go all the way across the Atlantic Ocean and through Europe, this purple country right here, that is Ukraine. It's near Poland, it's near Romania, and that is where our story comes from today. So you can keep that in mind next time you're looking at a map or a globe. So here we go, I'm gonna share my screen and we will get started. Okay, so here's our story, The Mitten, adapted and illustrated by Jan Brett. Like I said, it's a Ukrainian folktale. Okay, so here we go. Once there was a boy named Nikki who wanted his new mittens made from wool as white as snow. At first, his grandmother, Baba, did not want to knit white mittens. If you drop one in the snow, she warned, you'll never find it. But Nikki wanted snow white mittens and finally Baba made them. So you can see she has her yarn ready to go starting to make his mittens. After she finished, she said, when you come home, first I will look to see if you are safe and sound but then I will look to see if you still have your snow white mittens. So off Nikki went and it wasn't long until one of his new mittens dropped in the snow and was left behind. You can see right at the base of the tree is our lost mitten. Seems like he didn't get very far <laughs> before he lost his mitten. Let's see what happens next. A mole 
tired from tunneling along, discovered the mitten and burrowed inside. It was cozy and warm and just the right size, so he decided to stay. So you can see right near the base of the tree is our mitten, and we have a mole going inside. Let's see what happens next in our story. A snowshoe rabbit came hopping by. He stopped for a moment to admire his winter coat. It was then that he saw the mitten and he wiggled in feet first. The mole didn't think there was room for both of them, but when he saw the rabbit's big kickers, he moved over. So, wow, look at that white mitten already starting to get a little stretched out. We have two animals in there so far. Next, a hedgehog came snuffling along. Having spent the day looking under wet leaves for things to eat, he decided to move into the mitten and warm himself. The mole and the rabbit were bumped and jostled, but not being ones to argue with someone covered with prickles, they made room. Yeah, I would definitely move aside if there was an animal coming by with lots of prickles. Let's see what animal we meet next. As soon as the hedgehog disappeared into the mitten, a big owl attracted by the commotion swooped down. When he decided to move in also, the mole, the rabbit, and the hedgehog grumbled. But when they saw the owl's glinty talons, they quickly let him in. That's a good point. If I saw an animal trying to squeeze in with those sharp talons, I would get out of the way. And you can see the prickles poking through the mitten, really starting to get stretched out here. Up through the snow appeared a badger. He eyed the mitten and began to climb in. The mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, the owl were not pleased. There was no room left, but when they saw his diggers, they gave him the thumb. It started snowing, but the animals were snug in the mitten. A waft of warm steam rose in the air, and a fox trotting by stopped to investigate. Just the sight of the cozy mitten made him feel drowsy. The fox poked his muzzle in. When the mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, the owl, and the badger saw his shiny teeth, they made the fox lots of room. You can see at the very edge of our mitten, there's a little nose poking through. Oh boy, let's see who's coming next. A great bear lumbered by. He spied the mitten all plumped up. Not being one to be left out in the cold, he began to nose his way in. The animals were packed in as tightly as could be. But what animal would argue with a bear? The mitten swelled and stretched. It was pulled and bulged to many times its size. But Baba's good knitting held fast. Along came a meadow mouse, no bigger than an acorn. She wriggled into the one space left and made herself comfortable right on top of the great bear's nose. The bear, tickled by the nose's whiskers, gave an enormous sneeze. Ah, 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 chew! The force of the sneeze shot the mitten up into the sky and scattered the animals in all directions. Even the owl lost a feather up here. Everyone's flying around. Let's see what happens to our mitten. On his way home, Mickey saw a white shape in the distance. It was the lost mitten silhouetted against the blue sky. As he ran to catch his snow white mitten, he saw Baba's face in the window. First, she looked to see if he was safe and sound, and then she saw that he still had his new mittens. And that's the end of our story. You can see <laughs> Baba checking out, why is this mitten so stretched out? I'm sure he had a great story to tell. Okay. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's story.
Yes, I agree. It is an amazing book. Okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit more about the animals that we met in today's story. So let's see here. So the animals we met in today's story, we met a fox, a badger, a hedgehog, a rabbit, a mole, a bear, and an owl, and also a mouse. So I wanted to ask you, do you know, have you ever seen these animals outside in the wild? Some of these animals don't live here in Pennsylvania, like a hedgehog, but maybe you've seen one as a pet before. Or maybe you've seen one of these animals before in the summer, but not the winter. Animals are built to survive in different climates. So all the animals we met in our story, they have something special called an adaptation that helps them in the wintertime. All of these animals are suited to live in a place that gets cold. So we are gonna learn a little bit more about that word, adaptation. An adaptation, is a special behavior, a body part, or even something like fur or scales that can help an animal to survive. So for example, we can think about the owl in our story. An owl has a really sharp hook-shaped beak and that helps the owl to eat the food that it likes to eat, it eats meat. So it helps it tear apart the meat that they eat to help them to live. If they had a beak maybe like a hummingbird had, like really thin and delicate, they wouldn't be able to eat the food that they needed to get big and strong and survive in the wild. So that is an example of an adaptation. So I want you to think about what animals do, what adaptations do they have that help them to survive in winter? It could be something to keep them warm, something to help them store food, Let's talk about it. So bears, bears, they go into a deep winter sleep, but it's actually not a true hibernation. And you might've heard that word before. Um, so in the fall, bears will eat a lot of food and they'll store a lot of um, fat in their body and then they'll go somewhere to sleep. And that way they don't have to, it's really hard to hunt for food in the winter when things are are covered by snow, so they don't have to worry about it. They have all of that fat reserved. Um, so they'll take a deep sleep. Sometimes they will wake up a couple times in the winter, but that's why you don't really see that many bears around in winter. They're off sleeping and working off those fat reserves. Okay, next. The rabbit in our story was actually called a snowshoe hare. And the really cool adaptation that these rabbits have is when winter comes, their fur turns white to help them to camouflage or blend in. Um, and then in the summer and fall, they lose that fur and their fur goes back to more of like a brown, a reddish brown color. And they have a great name. Snowshoe hares have really large furry feet and it helps kind of like snowshoes to help them stay on top of the snow without sinking all the way to the bottom. I know that's happened to me before when I'm trying to climb over a pile of snow, my feet just sink right through. Okay, so another animal from our story were owls. So owls, they live in the winter time. They're nocturnal, so they hunt at night. They will find shelter in tree cavities. They're really good at camouflage. This picture is a great example of that blending in to their surroundings. They can fluff up their feathers to protect them in the cold. So that's some things that owls do to protect themselves in winter. Next are hedgehogs. So you probably have never seen a hedgehog in the wild before here, but you might have seen someone have a hedgehog as a pet. Hedgehogs um, live on other continents, but they actually hibernate. They will go into a deep, deep sleep in the winter and they'll nest in a pile of leaves on the ground and pretty much just curl up into a ball. And kind of like the bears, they eat a lot of food in the fall to store that body fat that they can kind of work off of all 
all winter long. Next, we have moles. Moles live in underground tunnels, and you can see from the picture, they have really sharp claws up front that they use to kind of dig, almost like a little shovel, to help them to dig in the ground. They usually live in the ground in underground tunnels. And then when winter comes, they stay in the ground, but because the very top of the ground becomes frozen from snow and ice, the moles will dig even deeper into the ground where the soil is still soft and that way they can stay warm. Badgers. Badgers aren't really found here in Pennsylvania. You can see them more in on the west coast like towards Washington or Oregon and badgers don't hibernate but they definitely slow down in the winter. They eat a lot of food in the fall to prepare. They sleep more. They don't move around as fast, which would be an adaptation. And foxes, foxes are so cool. They do live here in Pennsylvania. Maybe you've seen one before. Sorry, my computer just paused, but they grow thick fur and they use their bushy tails to protect them. And they actually will sleep out in the open. Um, so, a fox, while their babies might be sleeping away in a den um, or a place where they're protected from the weather, foxes have enough thick fur to protect them where they will just sleep out in the open. Another example of an adaptation is Arctic foxes. They can actually, they're totally white, so it helps them to camouflage and blend in with a snowy, snowy climate. Okay, and mice. Mice will hide and store food to last them through the winter. They will look for warm places to burrow, sometimes even in a house. Sometimes people will find mice in their house. So those are some adaptations that mice have to protect them in the winter time. Okay, so we just went through all of the animals from our story. Looking through the chat here. Yes, the illustrations from the book are amazing. I also love this book. Some people have seen foxes before, that's amazing. Very nice, okay. So last but not least, I have a craft I wanted to show you today. So in the email you got with the link to this uh, program, there was also a link to a website where you can print out these pictures and do the same craft along with me. So first, it comes with a mitten like this. And it comes with two of them and you're actually going to attach them. So you can attach them with staples or tape or glue, whatever you have. And I kind of just went all the way around the edges, but I wanted to keep the top part open, kind of like a regular pair of mitts that you could stick your hand in. So everything else is attached, the two pieces of paper, except for the very top. And it's up to you if you wanna keep it white like the story, I also for fun decided to decorate the other side. So you can decorate your mitten or you can keep it white, it's up to you. So now I have my mitten here and it opens up just like a regular mitten. And on that link you got in the email, there was also pictures of all the animals from our story. We have an owl, a fox, a hedgehog, a mouse, our snowshoe hare, a bear, a badger, and a mole. So I colored all of these. You can color them however you'd like. And a few people are asking me where they can find this link 
And here I will share it in our chat so everyone is able to get to it. So here is the link that you can use to print out those pictures. And then once you have your mitten all cut out and ready to go and your animals, you can put all of your animals into your mitten. And you can carry this mitten along with you wherever you go and take out each of your animals, just like the story. So there's your mitten craft. And I have a few questions here I'll answer. So someone asked, do you have any of these animals? What animals do you have at Hawk Mountain? So from our story, let's see. We definitely have owls here at Hawk Mountain. We have rabbits, mice, foxes, and we do have bears. We don't have the brown grizzly bears like the one from the story, but we have black bears here in Pennsylvania. So those are animals that you can find here. Um, animals that we have here at Hawk Mountain that we use for programs. We have different raptors or birds of prey. We have a great horned owl, a screech owl. They're pretty small, about this big. And we also have a red-tailed hawk. And let's see what else. Someone said they've seen a hedgehog, very cool. What is my favorite animal? I'm definitely partial to raptors, so I do love the owl from this story. Thank you guys all for the great questions. So I think that's everything for today and feel free to ask some more questions as we wrap up. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you had fun. Be sure to check out that link that I sent you uh, for the uh, printout so you can make a mitten along with me. And our next sanctuary story time is one month from today. It's Thursday, March 25th at the same time, 11 o'clock. And we will be reading the story Hawk Rising. It's a really awesome book. And actually, if you live near Hawk Mountain Sanctuary, we have that book in our bookstore. So if you're interested in buying the book and reading it along with me next month, you can buy it at our bookstore. Also, if anyone has pictures of their mittens that they want to show. I had a few people ask that. I'm going to leave my email in the chat and you can absolutely send me a picture of your mittens. I would love to see them. And if you have any other questions about raptors or Hawk Mountain, I would love to answer those too. So feel free to shoot me an email if you have any extra questions. And I wanted to thank you so much for joining us today. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye-bye.